Hey! How are you doing there, huh? This shirt even looks like water, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, I don't know why everybody keeps asking me about Victor Schauberger. It's like, have you heard of Victor Schauberger? Well, of course I have. There's not a single halfway decent metaphysician or inventor that I, I haven't heard of. There might be some really oddball Russian or Ukrainian ones I might not have heard of. Considering the fact that I translate Russian, I've I know most of the Russian ones too. This is a book, uh, Living Water, by uh, Olaf Alexanderson. There's some quotes from uh, Victor Schauberger. I was going to read a quote in here. Um, first, let me first, uh, first let me first, <laughs> first let me uh, start off by uh, saying that uh, uh, you know a certain percentage of this, depending on how intelligent you are or are not, will sound. Uh, Interestingly uh, esoteric, and uh, let me state the fact that if you don't know me, or if you do know me and you don't know me, that uh, I have no interest whatsoever in anything of the New Age movement. You know, the people that you see that are like collecting sacred rocks and, uh, you know, building little goofball shrines, you know, nothing against that, but I have no connection to the New Age movement. I'm only interested in what's hyper logical and rational. Um, you know, the, uh, the grandfathers of rational, logical thought and of science itself, both Platonic, Pythagorean, and Aristotelian metaphysicians specifically, and of course they were philosophers, i.e. philosophia, the love of wisdom. You know, they discussed uh, esoteric, um, i.e. metaphysical things at great length. Only a fool thinks that the metaphysics is one thing and physics another. This is physics and this is metaphysics. No, it just heads and tails of the exact same silver of the coinage of the nature of uh, cosmic mechanics. So let's say, get on to uh, discussing uh, water. I wanted to talk about the water molecule. Actually, some people have brought up in the past. They said, well, you know, they, the geometry of the water molecule is measured at 100, and it depends on who you actually reference. Say it's measured at 104 degrees here at the apex of the oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen molecule. And that's actually measured from dead assumed center. No one's actually ever measured the uh, geometry of water. We know pretty precisely, very close, excuse me, very, uh, very closely what it is. But measured from the outer, and water is a polar molecule, measured from the outer perimeter of the oxygen to the outer perimeter, i.e. the charge perimeters of the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms is actually 108. This is the 108, 36, 36 degree triangle of the Pythagoreans. It's the only geometry of absolute incommensurability. Explaining incommensurability would take um, a significant number of hours. So people say, well, water is not 108 degrees, 104. Well, they're actually measuring it from dead center of atom to atom to atom. So if you measure it from charge apex to charge apex, it actually is 108. So that's something I actually had to point out to here to begin with. Um, very importantly, when we talk about water purity, and I actually made uh, several videos on water, including one on how to create a uh, water purification device, but I didn't specifically illuminate the fact that there's two types of water purity. I used to work with the distilled water apparatuses that required extremely pure water, but the feed line ran in from the faucet, the regular faucet, into the uh, distillation. It's a very expensive water distillation unit, and man, it made really, 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 really pure water. But there's two types of purity. We're actually uh, uh, conflating one type of purity as both. Most people aren't aware of the other type of purity. All that tap water, first we must state, you know, has come from recycled toilet water from the water treatment uh, facilities. It's been recycled a million times. Uh, most of it is urine and fecal matter and every form of nas nasty filth and muck you could possibly imagine that's passed through people's bowels over and over again, containing antidepressants and every drug known to man and some drugs that are not known to man. Yeah. So the one type of purity that we're, uh, people obviously are aware of is absolute purity. You know, purest distilled water. There's some uh, like nine level uh, chemically pure water that's used for certain scientific experiments and it's actually quite expensive. 
comes in these uh, hermetically sealed stainless steel containers. That's one type of purity where you know basically 99.99999% of the contents are water. Kind of like bullion of silver and gold with 99.999% uh, purity. That's one type of purity. The other type of purity that I was referring to in referencing the uh, water uh, device that's actually passed eight to nine times around a magnet is the erasure of the holographic memory or the nature of water because water is the dipole antenna of both life and consciousness. It is the seat of memory. All life itself, as you very well know, is nothing but a, a pile of dust with water. My wife's ashes are about 20 feet from me. It's a little box about yay big like yay big, huh? It's full of a bunch of dust. That's the remains of my wife. Life and consciousness itself requires water. It is the dipole antenna. I'm saying it again. Water is the dipole antenna of life and of consciousness itself. Hmm? So getting on to uh, concluding on the two types of purity. You know, there's one type of purity where we're talking about pure, pure water that is chemically pure, free. And, by, and most people think that distilled water, including me, you know, tastes horrible, even though it's uh, chemically pure. You know, it lacks minerals and salts and other things that uh, make it taste good. This is, of course, uh, from an aquifer system. I used to live in uh, Daytona Beach when I went to photography school. I'd go to High Springs, Florida all the time. Look it up, High Springs uh, High Springs Aquifer System, the northern central aquifer, aquifer system of Florida. I used to swim. Specifically, I was a cave diver. I used O2 decompression tanks, underwater scooters, uh, twin steel 90s. I used to go into large dome rooms. The average depth was about 120 feet. Deep down in, well, not very deep, but my average about 120 feet, but you're way the hell in. So, you know, you may not be that deep, but if you want to rise up, you got to go back to the entrance. You know, hang upside down like a bat from a cave from these crystal pure aquifer uh, cave systems. I used to dive J uh, Jenny Springs, Little River, Little uh, Devil's Eye, Devil's Ear, the name of the caves, Little River Cave, and some other dangerous caves. Um, they're very, very, very beautiful. And, you know, if you ever wanted to drink a water, it's way better than the stuff that you could buy on the shelf. Most of that water in the aquifer uh, cave system, and also too varies uh, worldwide. Um, this, of course, I forget which mountain range that Gerald Steiner comes from, and of course so they uh, add carbonation to it, obviously. I mean, it's been in the ground an average globally somewhere between 60 to 120 years, depending on the aquifer system, of where it's actually extracted from. Yeah, it contains minerals from uh, the source rock, and of course it's not chemically pure, you know, this has stuff added to it. I mean, it has carbonation, but outside of the carbonation, it has the minerals of the source rock and other minerals that make it taste nice. And of course, distilled water, even though it's chemically pure, you know, tastes pretty horrible. I mean, I think most people think, I'm going to take a drink of this. Most people think that distilled water tastes pretty bad. And I agree. On a side note, um, People that actually get heart transplants and liver transplants and kidney transplants, they wake up with memories of things that they themselves... Have. You just do a Google search on this. There are tons and tons and tons of examples. Some old guy will get a, a heart transplant from, say, somebody that died in a motorcycle wreck or something. Wake up with a new heart, and he'll have memories of things that he never did. It's like, I have this specific memory, and it turns out... When that is revealed to the loved ones of the person whose organs are, wow, yeah, that was the experience of, you know, so-and-so that died whose organs were donated to you. Water is the holographic dipole, not only of life and of consciousness, but also, too, of memory. There are two types of memory, and uh, the ancients differentiated out that quite well. We have no distinction between mind, brain, consciousness, and mentation. But the ancients did, and the words are extremely distinct, both in Greek and in Pali. And uh, by the Egyptians, uh, mamo and uh, chitta and vinyana, or mano ka vinyana, extremely uh, differentiated out words, which they don't have any distinction in English, mind, mentation, and consciousness. They both basically refer to that jello, uh, soft lump between our ears in English, but uh, in the ancient languages of the metaphysicians, 
and I translate that uh, Pali, for example, and I translate ancient Greek, uh, there is a distinction. There's a huge distinction. And uh, the nuance, however, does not pass when it gets translated in English. But anyway, getting back to the point. Also, too, we know that the Chaldean oracles actually did two things, that the, uh, the wisest and the richest people would uh, seek advice from the Chaldean oracles. There's a brilliant Nova series on this. They would actually sniff the volcanic vapors out of a rock for a type of euphoria, but the primary source of, uh, of, uh, of insight from the Chaldean oracles that they were paid for, donations were made to the oracles of Delphi, is they had large pools that they would immerse themselves into for extended periods of time and go into trance-like states. And uh, from a matter of pure logic and uh, retroductive uh, uh, simplicity, it cannot be other than the case Then it would be as a ham radio operator going from like a quarter wave antenna to a half wave antenna or a full wavelength antenna whereby which the SNR, the signal to noise ratio, is boosted. In other words, gain amplification. You ever notice, and this happens to me all the time, there's also too a reason why I love to soak in water. Not because I like to, you know, strip down and soak in water. Is that people get inspiration in the shower, they love to sing in the shower, they, you know, a lot of people get inspiration in the shower. And uh, no one's ever made the connection that you're immersing yourself, or in a tub, usually it's in a tub. You get this uh, boost of inspiration that seems to come ab extra to yourself. And that's hyperlogical. If you actually go seeking the answers to things of the mere water that makes up your body alone, may or may not be sufficient. But by increasing uh, the gain amplification, by immersing your body along with a pure body of water, hopefully it's pure, you know, you get inspiration and these ideas come to you. But, by the way, this reminds me instantly, and I forget his name, he's a Japanese inventor. And he has more inventions than anybody in all of history. It's thousands of inventions. I forget his name. He's like a short, fat, bald dude. <laughs> he's Japanese. And where he gets all his inspiration for his inventions is he swims laps every morning. He spends an enormous amount of time in a giant Olympic-sized swimming pool swimming and soaking he's the most prolific inventor of all history way more so than tesla or anybody else i forget his name but he's an old japanese dude um, maybe you can find uh, who this person is but uh, i remember distinctly but i can't remember the guy's name but anyway there's two types of water purification and um, if you want me to make another video uh, getting on to the detailed elaborate metaphysics of water being the dipole antenna of life that I actually have to go into incommensurability. By the way, incommensurability is quote unquote the only secret, the the deepest secret of the Pythagoreans. This is the actual uh, geometry of incommensurability, the 108, 36, 36 degrees isosceles triangle, which is also to the geometry of water. And this is the, I don't know if you know what a dipole is. I've actually uh, built a lot of antennas and soldered a lot of them together. Usually uh, you find like a tall, tall tree and you hoist it up and you actually have this inverted V, which is a dipole and it actually is uh, for broadcasting and transmitting and uh, working on uh, HF, high frequency uh, broadcast uh, transmissions and speaking with other people with their ham radio equipment. But water is the dipole incommensurability and geometry of life and of consciousness itself. Without which, you know, all human beings are exactly like my late wife over there, you know, about 20 feet behind the camera. Just a box of dust. So, water is the source of memory. Water is also, too, and you can look this up if you don't believe me. Someone tried to argue, well, it's not in DNA. It's like, yeah, water actually makes up the structure of DNA. It's actually the binding nature of DNA. Um, there have been uh, Japanese uh, scientists that have done exploratory, and you, you a lot of people uh, have seen examples of this where they'll actually uh, play uh, rock, you know, like death metal music or they'll put all their, they'll hold a jar of water or stick their hands in water and experience, relive like the most horrible experiences of their life and they'll just pour enormous amounts of hate while touching or having their hands in the water. And they'll feed that water to the plants and they'll take the exact same water that they're playing classical music to. You know, they'll think let warm, loving thoughts to that exact same water but separate. They'll feed it to an identical set of plants and they grow radically, radically, radically different, okay? This experiment, you'll get up if you don't believe me. I know there's at least 
probably 100 YouTube videos on this. This experiment has been done thousands and thousands of times, replicated by countless numbers of people. It's identical water. Yeah. People think that metaphysics is some sort of new age esoterica, and it's not. I mean, the metaphysics of uh, the greatest scientific minds, such as Plato, Plotinus, Aristotle, Numenius, Syrianus, Iamblichus, Demetius, Proclus, that I already mentioned Proclus, um, and others, is undeniable. These people are far more intelligent and infinitely more wise than you are. I'm not putting you down. Most people, when they even read the works of these people, they can't even make it through a page because their work is so dense, so uh, hyper-intellectual. It's actually not intellectual. It's noetic. It is a different level of uh, intelligence. It's not empirical knowledge. It is or I, episteme, it is a type of noetic transcription. People's brains melt when they try to read um, uh, like uh, De Divina Proportione or um, what's the other one? The works of Jakob Burma or um, The Pirifusian by John Scotus Aries. Their brains melt. Uh, or uh, Nikola Tesla's uh, most famous book of all time that he loved and embraced, which was, uh, uh, oh, I forget what it is. Oh, it escapes me. I got copies of it all. You know what book I'm talking about. Um, anyway, the book will make your brain melt. I'm sorry the book's uh, title and author escapes me right now because I'm always thinking about a thousand things at once. But water is also part of uh, DNA and RNA. This is a fact. Uh, frequency harmonics uh, enacted upon what and this is the reason why we're all being bombarded by a high band 5g which is microwave we all know what water does in a microwave right well we actually have beam forming technology from uh, high band 5g uh, transceiver arrays and they actually beam form they, which they do is they triangulate you and they'll actually send the signal directly to you to not only cut down on interference, cut down on transmission, uh, power usage, which is actually quite important on those uh, transceiver towers. But that also affects the water that makes up your consciousness. This is part of the reason why people feel so much better when they get out in the middle, like I do. I got a cabin out in the woods. It is the middle of nowhere. I got no cell phone reception out there, which is a good thing. Kind of. <laughs> Kind of good thing, kind of a bad thing. You just feel like someone flipped the switch and, you know, woke you up from like, I don't know, like you were drugged or something like that. They just flip the switch and, you know, things are lucid and clear and, you know, you can smell, you smell better and see better and your senses are alive and you're thinking more clearly. There is a reason for that. Um, so... There's so many mysteries in water. I wanted to read a little passage of Victor Schauberger. The only reason I really wanted to read this is because everyone says, you ever heard of Victor Schauberger? So of course I've heard of Victor Schauberger. I don't know why people think I don't know who this guy is. So anyway, this is a uh, little passage from Victor Schauberger. Far back in history, there is evidence that men who have attempted to solve the riddle of water have been bitterly attacked. Every attempt to explain the nature of water in old books has been demolished in later editions. Fascinating fact, by the way. In any case, maintaining this sense of mystery about water ensures the prosperity of capital investive economy, for financial interest thrives only on defective economies. If the riddle surrounding the origins of water were solved, it would be possible to make as much pure water available as required at any location, in this uh, way, vast areas of uh, desert would become fertile. As a consequence, the selling, uh, you know, the selling values of uh, produce would sink so that low that there would be no more incentive to speculate or develop agricultural machinery. The concept of unrestricted production and uh, cheap machine power is so revolutionary that the way of life all over the world would experience an immediate change. Maintaining the mystery of water, therefore, maintains the value of capital. So every attempt to come nearer to an explanation is attacked. And then, of course, he goes on and talks about his water purification machine. But uh, I really only wanted to mention this. It was an interesting quote from Schauberger, just to say that, yes, I do know who the hell Victor Schauberger is. I've known for 
Ever since I was a little pipsqueak, I knew who the hell Victor Schauberger was. But none of us were taught this stuff in high school or college. Water is not only the dipole of antenna, the dipole antenna of consciousness and life, but of sanity, of clarity of thought. And uh, my entire life, I've known that no matter how pure it is, physically pure, like triple distilled water, yeah, because I worked with, like I said, an expensive uh, distillation machine, but it was still just purified tap water, and that purified tap water has literally run through the guts of a billion people who are depressed and plagued and boy, you know. So there is something that the purification itself cannot remove from the water. Purification only removes that which is not water from water. But what about the purification of the water itself? Because water is the dipole antenna of life, consciousness, and of memory. So there's two types of water purity. The device that I showed you a couple, a few months ago, in which you can make one super cheap and super easy, is for removing the memory, the actual charge, the holographic uh, information that's actually within water. That sounds esoteric if you have, uh, you know, some sort of narrow, myopic mind of understanding things. But it's hyperlogical and it's hyperrational. There's nothing because I have no love of the New Age movement, none whatsoever. This is really good water, by the way. Even though it's carbonated, I know carbonation, you know, changes the acidity of your body pH, but it's still, it's at least been in the aquifer system for many countless decades, long before the mechanized era came along. And uh, it's also too lightning. Um, not only is the Schumann resonances purify water in the aquifer system, but lightning itself, the, uh, the discharges into counter space or the grounding of a lightning, which goes into our aquifer system, that is actually what removes the second type of impurity of water. Hmm? Oh, this is good stuff. Anyway, I love this particular type of water, water, by the way. I don't care if it's got carbonation. Actually, my favorite... Pure water, I haven't found it again. I know it's somewhere if I looked hard enough. Is this Icelandic water that comes off of this uh, insanely old glacier. It's uh, glass bottles and it's from Iceland. And it is water that is uh, taken from uh, melt ice from an incredibly old glacier in Iceland. I forget the name of the water. Someone will probably tell me what it is. But Anyway, I hope you like this video. Have a lovely day. Luxi Veritas, and yes, this is the geometry of incommensurability, the deepest secret of the Pythagoreans, and this is also the geometry of water, which is the incommensurable geometry of life, memory, and consciousness itself. Consciousness cannot exist without this geometry. It's the same geometry that's tattooed on the back of my hand. It's upside down right now, but it's right there. Thank you. Goodbye.